Part 3, Financial Analysis to Boost Performance, Chapter 7, The Three Financial Goals and Some Perspective on Them. So what's the point of all this financial analysis anyway? It isn't to make work for accountants, though it does. And it isn't to have something impressive to show your banker, though it may help on that score. The point is to help you manage your business more effectively and to reach your financial goals. Before you put all this data to use, however, it's wise to put things in perspective. For example, notice that word, goals. We assume that you want to have a successful money-making business. Beyond that, we don't have any idea what your goals might be. Maybe you want to be the next Bill Gates. Perhaps you want to run a small family company that you can pass along to your children. Maybe you hope to build up the business over five years, then sell it and play golf. Any of these goals and many other others are worthwhile objectives. The important thing is that you know what your goals are. Financial analysis can show you how you're doing on the road to your goals, but you have to determine the destination. Otherwise, you won't know what the numbers are telling you. Most financial advisors generally like to see companies with strong balance sheets, not too much debt compared to equity, and healthy net profit. But if you're in a startup situation, for example, your balance sheet may look weak and your profit may be, even, may be small or even negative. Is this so bad? Not necessarily, as long as you're clear on your goals and you have a plan for reaching them. Eventually, you will need to earn a profit, achieve positive operating cash flow, and record a healthy return on assets, ROA. Your plan should specify when you expect to reach the mi each milestone and what you're going to do in the meantime. If it will be a while before you achieve a positive OC OCF, operating cash flow, for example, you need a reliable source of financing, financing cash flow to cover whatever deficits you may be running up. And you need to watch your change in cash on the cash flow statement to be sure you're not consuming your cash faster than you planned on. Another word of perspective. Not everything's that important about a business is not everything that's important about a business is captured in the financial. To be successful in running a company, you do you need to do a lot of things right. You need to offer a product or service at a price customers are willing to pay. You need to mount effective sales and marketing campaigns. You need to hire good people and lead them well. You need to make plans for the long term as well as for the short term and to figure out the appropriate balance between them. Financials can tell you how you're doing at managing the parts of your business that can be measured in dollars. That's a lot, but not everything. The financials you get today can't tell you how loyal your customers will be tomorrow. They can't tell you what a competitor is about to come out with a new product that's better than yours. They can't tell you where to find or how to select the best people. Finance is extremely important. If you want to run a successful company, you need the kind of insight into your performance that only a good set of financials can provide. But you must know where you want to go, and you must pay equal attention to all the non-financial aspects running of a company. From a financial perspective, the job of a company owner or any business manager is relatively simple. That job is to manage sales, expenses, and assets in such a way that the company reaches its financial goals. There are three key elements, and they're often captured in the acronym SEA. Non-financial goals may differ from one company to another, but the three financial goals are essentially the same for all businesses. I'm not going to tell you what SEA is. Okay. I'm sure we'll figure it out eventually. Oh, sales expenses and assets. <laughs> So sales expenses, that job is to manage sales expenses and assets, SEA. Most companies must make a profit in the short term. All companies must make a profit in the long term and not just any amount of profit. They must make enough profit to reinvest for the future, to pay dividends to shareholders or both. For the typical company, of course, the long term isn't different from the short term. It needs to make money right now. We stuck the qualification in there to remind you that a startup and fast growth companies often don't make money right away, and that even well-established companies can afford an occasional year in which they sacrifice profit in pursuit of some other goal, such as expansion. Companies must generate sufficient cash to pay their bills. This is an immediate concern. Remember Mobley's dictum. 
You can operate for a long time without profit, but you can't operate one day without cash. Again, some young high growth companies don't expect operating cash flow to be positive for some time. Many of these high tech operations with substantial capital venture capital backing, but many of these high tech operations with substantial venture capital backing but these companies must monitor the rate at which they're consuming their cash and they need to pl a plan showing how and when they'll change over from consumer to cash generator companies must provide a sufficient return on investment to be competitive with alternative investment opportunities if they don't they'll have a difficult time getting any investment You'll note that these three generic goals correspond exactly to our specific bottom line, three bottom lines, net profit, operating cash flow, and return on assets. So let's see what an owner or a manager must do to maintain these three healthy bottom lines. And that is the end of chapter seven. Thank you for watching. And we'll go on with chapter eight, managing for optimum performance, net profit.